I'd like to read a, a poem now that I wrote this spring when I went up to Olympia, Washington to give a poetry reading. It's right up near the Canadian border and for some reason or other I was housed in a middle-class suburb with a doctor's wife. I have never figured out <laughs> why I, I was staying there, but when I arrived, um, it was obviously a day of disasters. Someone had, had um, her son had had an automobile accident the night before. Someone had just had an accident on the street. And I was a little bit spooked by this woman because she was really getting high on calling the ambulance and helping people out. I think she felt more needed and, and loved than she had in a long, long time. But it was making me feel a little bit nervous because I felt like in some way I was going to have to have a disaster in order to be welcomed in this household. Um, fortunately, that didn't happen because not an hour after I was there, another natural disaster occurred on the street. Uh, the neighboring dentist was riding his small son on his bicycle and the little boy stuck his foot into the spokes of the bicycle and needless to say you know what happened they were both on the asphalt and everyone was running out and there was blood everywhere the man looked very badly injured um, my hostess called the ambulance which was there within three minutes and everyone commended her. I stood inside sort of watching what was going on and feeling like a ghoul actually watching, but I was watching the people watching, so maybe that was once removed. And this poem is about one particular woman that I watched, the bouquet, the bouquet of blood on the street. I know what it is. Saw the man fall from his bicycle when his child stuck his shoe in the spokes. Saw his neighbor, the lady who wanted to help, bring out the roll of paper towels, thinking to wipe up the blood from the asphalt after the ambulance left. But giving up her purpose, knowing she meant to wipe away memory, perhaps. I saw the ambulance leave, carrying him with the flesh and bone gone from his nose, the blood covering one eye as if in some child's coloring book a three-year-old had scribbled over a raccoon's face. And I sat in a foreign household and watched a neatly clad housewife bring out her roll of paper towels, thinking to wipe up the blood off the street. What restrained her, I wonder? Knowing there was so much there, perhaps? A pool so big? the parodying of all those TV ads. It's absorbent. And Mrs. Suburban Housewife, tell all of our listeners now just how absorbent it is. You wiped up a whole pool of blood spill on the street? Now that is something, isn't it? All you listeners out there, and the exclamation points follow everything. Remember, you can wipe anything away with paper towels. But what impressed me, the voyeur, the foreign visitor in this American suburb, was that this housewife walked out with her roll of paper towels and then she silently, almost stealthily, put them behind her back, ashamed, I wonder, and walked back into her house without using them. The pool of blood too big? No, not for those absorbent towels. Perhaps some sense of history that you cannot wipe a man's blood from the pavement when his child has thrown him there. The bouquet of blood blackens, wears itself into the street, the stain a reminder of a simple, deadly accident of life. I remember the simple dignity of that neighbor, the housewife who wanted to help, bringing out her roll of absorbent paper towels and then not touching the pool of blood refraining from wiping up a man's blood as if it were some sticky mess her kids had dropped on the floor. Daily life dulls us, going to the office, cleaning up the messes of others, and yet some sensitivity was left to this woman. She understood 
looking at the pool of blood scraped out of the man, her neighbor's face, as if he had been strip-mined by some exploiting industrialist. She knew that she could not just wipe his blood from the street with her paper towels. She understood history, memory, record, and I will not forget her, a common housewife who rose above her nature.